Well, let's see what we're up to today. We have this gadget. This has been handed to me to repair, and I'm not sure exactly what the fault is. It's been on my desk so long that I've forgotten what the, uh, the fault was. Um, keep in mind with MS, I'm not doing this as a business anymore. I'm only doing these things uh, for my own interest and for mates that, uh, that need it. Um, this one's obviously uh, made in England. Uh, this belongs to a bloke that uh, manages or at least operates on a, uh, an airfield. Um, oh no, I think he is a man the airfield manager. I can't remember exactly what his particular title is. In any case, he gave this to me and said, can you fix it? Um, and he did describe in detail what the problem was. That was about six months ago. And life has kind of kept me busy since. So we'll see what's going on inside this thing. All right. So we had, we've got something floating around in here that I don't recognize. That looks like a nine volt, that looks like this stud from the nine volt battery clip. So straight away we can probably ascertain that's some of the problem. Now this looks like a halogen flash tube and um, I've actually made these by attaching a FET to a camera flash module and I have thousands of those from disposable cameras. At least I used to until I threw most of them out probably still got a stash of them somewhere. This might be just as simple as attaching another 9 volt battery clip and I think I've got a few of them kicking around. Well for the moment I'm going to go and uh, I might close my apprentice attenuation device aka the door first and we might trim this open. We'll be back. So this battery clip is shagged anyway so let's see if we can at least open up enough of it to put a bit of a voltage clip on or a bit of sorry a test clip one of the side effects of having ms and the associated brain lesions that i have discovered is that i can no longer multitask if i try and do something with my hands and something with my mouth at the same time it all sort of goes wrong which is why often you guys will hear me use incorrect terminology for things while i'm doing this but I've just learnt to not care what people think. All right. At least we've got this clip open enough that we can see what's going on. I don't want to bust that halogen tube. This looks like it's going to be our negative there. Now what we're going to do is go up to here and we're going to choose our 9 volt side of things. Um, and that is an LM7809 behind that with a heatsink. We're going to come back down here. And we'll see if we can clip some power onto this at 9 volts. Okay. Now it should charge that capacitor up and then eventually flash. Alright. Yep, I can hear that. That's basically a camera flash unit. Yep. Just wired up with that. So that works quite fine. So it might be just a case we have to replace the 9 volt battery clip on this. Uh, and that will be a case of deciding how to get this out. It appears to have been hot glued in. And we need to get access to this. So the actual problem itself is a simple one. The execution on the other hand could be a little tricky. I'm going to find something to pry this hot glue out. Let's see if tweezers do the job. Well, actually, that whole module is fairly well free-floating in there. That might just come out. Ah, oh, that was easy. All right, and we've got a bit of hot glue. That explains what was rattling around loose in there. And, um, yeah, we should be able to get that sorted here. I'm going to just, I'm gripping the, the hot glue gently with the pliers here. There we go. Let's get that blob of glue out. And it's still stuck to that wire. There we go. Oh, okay. That black wire shoots off down into the middle of nowhere. Oh, off the back of that switch. Which is also free floating. That's alright. So, I think it's time to get the soldering iron warm. So I've adjusted my viewing angle just a little bit. Or the camera angle here. So that you guys can see what we're up to. 
Now my apprentice attenuation device device may or may not be working so you might hear some background noise. I don't want to bust this tube so I'm going to stick it down gently with blue tech and try to keep the board fairly steady for this next part. Now I have a roll of 6040 tin lead solder here and I have an extraction fan just above the camera here. Now it's got two fans, one on the start of the tubing and one externally. The external one has got some junk stuck in there that I can't get to. That will be another video to fix that. Consequently, it's noisy. Very noisy. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a bit of fresh solder onto this and we should be able to warm that and pop that lead out the bottom. And I think when I reattach, I might go to the top of that. So we are going to mark that location as well so that I don't forget it. That will be positive right there. If we can see that. Anyway, now we need to find our negative wire and where you went. The negative wire is this one here. So being as we're removing this, we might snip that and pull that wire back out the other side. And that way we'll have a clear idea of which wire it is that we need to remove. So that one. Now here we go. Now, um, should be able to warm you up and pull that off the center pin. And before we forget, we'll put a bit of fresh solder on that pin just to facilitate reconnecting it. Okay. Now, start with our longest wire being our negative. The thread through there. Now, I do see a FET or an SCR in there. Um, a high voltage one folded over. This is basically a disposable camera flash unit with a FET on it. I've made exactly this to make strobe lights for model rockets in the past. So, uh, this is a familiar circuit to me. Now, we don't want too much slack on this or overhang on that cable. And this has probably been sitting in my collection for a bit. So a little bit of fresh solder on here will be all right. And we want to keep the direction of that cable somewhat similar to the original. So we're going to use a pair of tweezers here to align it nicely. And we're going to solder in here. Now you wouldn't think from watching this that I've got dexterity issues, but I certainly do. This is a long way from what I used to be able to do. Um, Alright, we've got our positive wire, which we need to trim just a touch shorter. So around about that length. And do this. I really need to fix that fan. I did actually, I stripped that a little bit too aggressively, so let's just do this a bit more gently, that's better. We'll tin our end here. Do that. Trim you a little. Now we said we were going to flip over and attach to this one under the board. It's going into a plastic case, that's not going to make a huge difference. And I've got that switch hot glued onto the coil there. I wonder if I could reheat that hot glue just a tiny bit and stick that back on. Let's have a little look here. Doesn't need to be on by much, just a little bit. And cool that one off. Cool. Okay, and uh, as a strain relief, which is pretty sure why they put, which is why, I'm pretty sure why they put glue on this in the first place, um, we'll attach a little bit there. Um, we might do that from this side. And I have some here. I give up using hot glue guns these days. Um, they just blow up on me. The PTC heating elements in them are not very useful. So let's go a little bit of that there. 
I'll let you cool off and then we'll do the other side. Right. Flip over, warm this up again and do this side. You can hear my apprentice yelling in the background there. It is a Friday night after all, so I can't complain too much. She has the Cherokee middle name for Little Wolf. Um, and uh, she lives up to it, especially when she has the little howling sessions. I probably don't help that. I howl back sometimes. All right, this looks good. Um, now, I think we should be able to turn that on. I'll hook it up to 9 volts and we'll see what happens. I don't know if I've got a 9 volt battery kicking around to give it back to him with, but we'll see how we go. Let's see what we get here. Oh, I can hear it working, so if we can hold that on there. Let's turn our overhead light off and see what we get. It's a fairly long duration flash. It's doing pretty well. Alright, I'm happy not being blind. Okay, now to see if I've got a 9 volt battery kicking around. Let's have a look. Before we find the 9 volt battery, we probably want to reseat this back into its case. Um, which I believe that was probably originally held in with some hot glue. But let's just see how we fit right here. Uh, I see I have encroached slightly on the, uh, the locating hole here. So... A little bit of a warm up there for a second. We should be able to get that on there. Get the switch back where we want it. So that should be just poking through the seal there. It's going to be a fairly tight seal. The walrus will be happy. Um, okay. So I think that's pretty good. I don't really need to do too much. All the standoffs are pretty good. Pretty well got it in place. And that will, the switch is going to float around though. That's a little annoying and I think that's why they hot glued the thing in. Alright. So we might add just a little bit under there to do that job. Just a little bit here. Not much though. Just to stop it from floating around. Should be good. Should give it a little bit of purchase on that rubber seal either way. And you guys can't see much of what I'm doing here, so we'll move that over. I think that's going to be a little bit better. And uh, we'll just secure it to the top of that coil as the manufacturer apparently originally intended. So we'll put a little bit along there. Alright. <clears throat> now. While that's cooling, let's find a 9 volt if I've got one. Alright, so it appears I don't have a spare 9 volt battery handy. Uh, one of the side effects of going to 10 year life permanent battery smoke alarms is you tend not to keep a stock of 9 volt batteries around anymore. Um, how are we going with that? Yep, that clips in like that and that clips in like so. That looks pretty good and we can flick the switch firmly. Okay, put our screws back in and we'll be pretty well done with this one. We've got a few other repairs to go but I'm ticking these off just slowly but I am eventually getting there. Alright. Alright, back in its case, and the battery terminals work. Alright, I'll return this to its owner. And uh, yeah, it's a made in England halogen strobe light. Sure, high velocity, <laughs> sure switches off. Yeah, they get to about 300 volts. That's what that warning light's about, the warning sticker is about. Alright, I'll see you all in the next one. Hope you had fun.